Hey folks, Eric here at Kelly's Concept, uh, here trying to help you save some money. So uh, today we're going to talk about OBD2 uh, port scanners or readers, as some people call it, uh, and that dreaded check engine light and how this can help you save money. Um, let's start off. I think every household should at least have one of these scanners. So today I'm going to go through four different scanners uh, that I have. They, they vary from different price ranges. I'm going to explain why I have each one of those. Um, so what is an OBD2 scanner? Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a reading device for uh, reading cars from 1996 and up. In 1996, the car industry introduced OBD2, which is onboard diagnostics version 2. Uh, since then, it's basically a universal uh, readout of what may be wrong with your car. Um, that this is what triggers the uh, check engine light in your car, and this is what causes you to not pass your state inspection, uh, the emissions portion of it. Um, in Texas, if you have a check engine light, uh, you will fail the emissions portions of it, and this is where having a scanner can come in handy. Now, please keep in mind, I am not affiliated with any of these scanners. These are the ones I have purchased through the years to uh, work on different vehicles for different issues I have. Um, I'm going to show you how to, uh, you know, read the code. I'm going to show you how to clear the code. Um, keep in mind, though, when you clear a code, just because the light's gone does not mean your car will pass the inspection. Everybody thinks, you know, that you just clear the light. As long as the light's not there, it's not going to pass. What happens when you clear the actual check engine light, it just resets the computer. Now, the computer in your car has to go through a learning cycle of different phases. Every car is a little bit different, but in general, there's like, there's, six to eight what's called not readies. In Texas, you're allowed one not ready um, because O2 sensor and your EVAP sensor are one of the last ones to clear uh, during the, learn the relearning cycle. So please keep that in mind. Don't say that, hell, you told me I can just clear my, my check engine light and when you got in space, state inspection, I failed. You will fail, okay? But I'm going to show you how to read it in, in an order to make sure you pass before you go in there and spend your money getting a state inspection. All right, uh, I'm going to introduce you to different ones. Unfortunately, I do not have a car with a check engine light, but I'll still go through the motions on how to read it and explain to you what's the difference. And just one thing to add, folks, you may be wondering, hey, you know, I don't know anything about cars. You know, and plus AutoZone reads them for free. That is true, all right? AutoZone will read the code for free, but they won't reset the code. And the reason why I say it's good to have, it's good to know, right? The more you knowledge you have, the more power you have. Especially nowadays, I hear left and right mechanics are ripping people off. So the more knowledge you have, it's going to help you. And I'm going to tell you, your car is a computer, right? And just like with your laptop or your desktop, a lot of times you just got to reset it. You know, I, what I always do is when I get a check engine light, first thing I do is reset it and see if it comes back. Usually within 20 miles or something, if the problem's there, it'll come back and then spend your money. Because there's been many times where I just reset it and the light never comes back, right? Uh, I just had a friend the other day with a VW Atlas. <clears throat> she had check engine light. VW wanted $1,800 because they told her she had bad gas, replace all her coil packs, replace the spark plugs. I went in there and it had a code P306. 306. It means cylinder six is misfiring. So all I did was just move the coil pack from, coil, from cylinder one, from six to one, and then one to six. Now, the problem followed it to, to cylinder one. That means my coil pack was bad, right? If it stayed a six, I go ahead and replace the, the spark plug and then, you know, further on troubleshoot. But, you know, as soon as I did that, reset the code, it never came back. She's been driving it for three weeks. I mean, that right there saved her $1,800. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to go through the different scanners I have and why I have each one of those and which one would probably work best for you. All right. First of all, I'm going to start off here. It's probably the cheapest one. You can get these versions on Amazon. This is an uh, Bluetooth OBD2 sensor. Uh, reader. I keep on saying sensor, but it's a scanner uh, or reader. Uh, basically, you just plug this into your OBD2 port, uh, install an app onto your phone, and then read the code. Um, the advantage of this one is that it's very small, very light. Um, I used this when I went to the car dealership, I mean, with car auctions when I was in the uh, automotive industry. Went to the auctions to read cars, you know, it's just real quick, just plug it in, boom, you're done. Uh, no wires, no, you know, nothing, nothing big to carry around. There are downsides to this. So let's say you are in the middle of nowhere. You don't have internet service because this relies on your phone app. You have to have internet connection. So without having service or internet connection, this is kind of deemed useless. 
Um, and then, you know, the good advantage of this one is it depends on the app itself. It can tell you how, when, how long it's been since the car has been reset the, and how long, uh, you know, some, it may have some history too that gives you the readout. Um, the other negative side of this one is this app requires you to pay extra if you wanted to delete the codes or other features. Uh, again, it's scalable, uh, expandable, but then it's going to cost you extra money. All right, this one. Uh, this one is like 20 bucks uh, at Walmart. Again, zero affiliation with them. It's just a simple plug-in unit. It does nothing but read the P codes. Um, it, it's, it, it does what it needs to do, right? It just reads the codes, tell you the not readies, and then and that's about it. It doesn't even tell you a description of what the code is. So if you actually had that P306 that I mentioned a while ago, you would have to then go on to Google to figure what it is. Not a bad unit to have, and in a pinch, just be able to throw this in your car. Um, I, you know, I, I keep this in my, uh, my car all the time. That way, you know, if somebody runs into a problem at work or, you know, in, on the side of the road, you can just scan it real quick and see what the problem is. But like again, it's very limited. Then you have this guy. He's uh, the third one I have. Um, I'll power it on here in a little bit uh, in a car, but it gives you a lot more options. With this, you'll be able to reset maintenance lights. Let's say you do your oil change, your brake change. You can go ahead and do a resets on those. Uh, it, it reads your ABS. It reads your airbag. Um, a little bit more advanced. Um, I bought this one because uh, when I had my Maserati, I was unable to uh, do the oil change. You know, under, clear the oil change light uh, into, without the scanner. So I had to got, get this. But it is a multi car, so you're not just limited to one vehicle. Um, we'll go through the phases or you know the boot up sequence and what all it can do. And then the big boy of it all, uh, this unit cost me around $1,900. Uh, but the advantage of this is you can do the uh, you know, full diagnostics. You can do TPMS. You can do remote diagnostics. You can send, it, it even customizes a, um, a repair report on what's needed to be fixed and sends it to the customer. Um, you can also do uh, different service functions like you, that the other unit can, you know, reset airbags, um, the ABS bleeding, you know, a lot of new German cars. Uh, require their ABS bleeding, this can, can do it. Um, it just does a lot more. This is more of a shop level unit. Um, it does, you know, like I said, air level calibrations, uh, just a lot more than just a regular OB2 scanner does. Um, you can also reprogram modules. So I've even reprogrammed ABS modules with this unit before. All right, folks, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, functionalities, uh, you know, just, just the bare minimal uh, introduction and functionalities of each one of these units. We're going to look uh, using my Jeep here. And first thing you want to do is find your OBD port. They all OBD2 ports look like this on every car. Locations do vary. Um, generally, they're under the driver's side, but I've seen some that are located on the passenger side too, but it's always under the dash. So we'll start with our uh, Bluetooth unit and we'll get that plugged in and then we'll show you how to go from there. All right, folks. So we have the Bluetooth unit plugged in. We'll head again to the car and then push the start button twice. Um, make sure you do not step on the brakes um, because you don't want the car to start, right? You know you're in the right position when you see um, all these lights come on, right? And that's gonna be your on position. And then we'll move to our phone. So folks, I stand corrected. Uh, this unit's actually Wi-Fi, uh, not Bluetooth. I had another one that's Bluetooth, but this one's actually Wi-Fi. So we'll connect to V-Link. All right, hit done. Now we'll go back to the app. Go ahead and hit link. As you can see, it's kind of cumbersome, uh, hence not one of my favorites. Now this Jeep does not have any issues, uh, so you're not gonna see any problems. So as you can see, it offers a lot of uh, options here. It gives your temperature, um, right? Then you just click on trouble codes. And of course it says there's no check engine light because I don't have any issues with this car. Uh, nothing pending, nothing uh, permanent. There was no freeze frames. Um, so there's no issues with this car. And if there was, it, it'll say that there's a code 
uh, that's going on. You notice this says reset trouble codes in mill. That means uh, maintenance in illuminated light. Um, there's, you know, you have to pay to do that on this uh, particular app, which I don't have, and that's why it's it's not one of my favorites. As you can see here, a lot of the stuff says only paid. So just to show you on this one, uh, this one, like I said, it's only good for reading, uh, not much else. I would actually highly pass on this one and just go to AutoZone and get it pulled for free. So next up, we have this uh, Hyper Tough Walmart brand. Picked this up for $19. Uh, again, this one has no codes. But if you notice here, there's, there's these little lights up top, right? Um, let's see if I can catch it on here. Right. Those lights um, are your indicators for your monitor status of your emissions. So as you can see, they're all uh, solid. There's eight of them here. And uh, with them all solid with zero DTC, I can go here and do a state inspection with no problems. Now, if somebody just uh, cleared these, you'll see all of them flashing. And that would give you a telltale sign that somebody just reset the computer. And this is where it also comes in handy is when you buy a car, if somebody just cleared the check engine light, you don't want to get scammed, go ahead and throw this on there. And if they don't want you to put this on their car, that means they're hiding something, right? Because if you go in here and you plug this in, it'll say zero DDC, but in here, these are flashing. That's mean there was a problem with it and they reset the car. All right, so this is the third unit I got. Um, this one's a little bit more complex, but uh, really, uh, you know, for the average Joe, this is more than enough. Um, but again, the, the advantage of this one is it does your airbags, it does your brakes, and it does your maintenance. So if you're a DI, DI wire, um, this is a perfect one, uh, you know, perfect DIY level scanner. Um, like I said, you know, you do your own uh, brakes, you do your own oil change, you can go in there and reset those. Uh, so you can see here, these are the service resets that it offers. And that's where it comes in really convenient. This one's a push button screen, a little more uh, options to push. Um, Like I said, this is for a little bit more advanced for your DIYs who, uh, you know, want to do, uh, you know, something else other than just read a code. Um, it tells you everything else like the other car did. I mean, the other scanner did. All right, and it gives you a little bit more. And you can go into in-depth and scan actual live data units. Um, this also is your troubleshooting like a, a ABS sensor. You don't, you got an ABS sensor light on. You don't know which one it is. This one will definitely tell you which one it is. And also you can actually see the revolutions on each one of your wheels to confirm that you have a bad sensor. So you're just not replacing parts. And finally, uh, the bad boy I have here, this one is more of a shop level um, scanner. Uh, this one's made by Launch. Again, zero affiliations. Just I found this one better than the Alltel. A lot of people use the Alltel brand. Um, I found this one to fit my needs better. Uh, here it goes, it goes through the full function scan of everything. Um, again, that does everything that previous unit does, like resetting service, brakes, oil, airbag. Um, you know, in addition, this one does also allow you to program, uh, reprogram new a ABS units or other computer units. You also, you can uh, add in a key a reader, and then you can actually reprogram keys with this one unit too. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to go into deeper. You can do a full scan of every uh, every uh, computer unit that's connected to it. So as you can see, this one's a lot more advanced. It detects every single module that's in the car, um, gives you the ability to rewrite it, uh, you know, like change features on there. Um, but be very careful that you know what you're doing because uh, a lot of times you can end up breaking out these units. So unless you really know what you're doing, I would stay away from these units. Um, but uh, to extent it's, uh, this is a more of a shop level. Well, folks, hope that helps you understand the different types of OBD2 scanners that are out there. Uh, which one will fit your needs is going to be up to you. Um, but I said uh, the benefits is being able to just be able to pull the code when you have a check engine light. Um, you know, that way you're not going just into a mechanic blindly. Uh, second use is when you're buying a new car, right? You can uh, use new use, new to you used car. Um, you can go ahead and pull the codes to make sure that there's nothing pending in there that there was nothing previously, or if the owner or dealership has cleared the code just so that you buy the car. Because remember, like here in Texas, all used cars are sold as is. Once you leave the lot, that problem is yours. So with this little tool for 20 bucks or $14 or $200, whatever you need is going to help you save a lot more money, uh, especially if you're going to buy something that's broken. 
Um, I'm not saying that all dealerships are shady or all people are shady, but hey, it's, uh, you know, trust but verify, right? Pull this in, you, if the code's been re erased, you know that they're trying to hide something. So, uh, you know, I've never heard of anybody making a mistake selling a car. I've always heard of people making a mistake buying a car. So I hope this video helps you out. Any other questions, feel free to uh, email me at kellysconcept at gmail.com or just leave a message in there uh, in the comments below and I'll answer uh, your question. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel for other videos.